And uh, uh, basically, uh, she also came to me this summer. This summer was kind of a boon on, on the graduate students. We had Kristen, we had Hala, we had Kayla coming a little bit later today. So it's kind of a boon of new people starting. And uh, she's working on a project, but what we started on this fall was I've been working with some high school students from Mumford. And obviously, you just heard from Kristen about the effects of acrylamide and L-cysteine and different features on that. Uh, I took with these, uh, with these high school students to look at what the protective effects of L-cysteine would do with uh, some other chemicals, but Allah was really kind of heading that project and, and with Kristen's aid and helping with that help do this project. So she's going to present some of this work that we did with these students. So, okay. Good morning. Today I am going to present the protective role of L16 with acetaminophen, caffeine, and sea salt in feed assay. Last semester we had three, three groups uh, from high school students. We were working on the teratogenic effects for some chemicals. So we choose chemicals that are familiar with the students since uh, they are high school students. And these chemicals are using them uh, like um, routinely in our life. So we had acetaminophen, caffeine, and sea salt. What is a teratogen? Teratogen is an agent that causes birth defect. It could be a street drug, medication, maternal disease, or, or, or alcohol use. Four to five percent of birth defects are caused because of the exposure to a teratogen. The severity of the teratogen depends on the level of the exposure of that teratogen and also the stage of the pregnancy during the exposure time. Acetaminophen is known uh, in the United States as Tylenol. We use acetaminophen to reduce the fever as an analgesic agent. And the first medical use for acetaminophen was in 1947. Now, uh, these days, we have acetaminophen in many of over-the-counter products and in many of the medication as an active ingredient. Caffeine is a stimulant substance. We found caffeine in coffee, tea, uh, soft drink, and in many of the medications. We use caffeine to stimulate our central nervous system to make us more alert. However, sometimes we will suffer from side effects of caffeine. So we will suffer from dehydration, irritability, headache, or increasing in the heart rate. L16 is our protective agent in this experiment. Uh, actually, L16 is amino acid found in the body. Our body synthesizes L16 in the liver, so L16 is categorized as non-essential amino acid. However, to synthesize L16, we need to have adequate amount of methionine. So we call l cysteine as semi-essential amino acid. We have several studies that have shown the benefits of l cysteine The antioxidant activity is one of these benefits. l cysteine supports the synthesis of glutathione, which is a powerful antioxidant in the body. Glutathione, in turn, uh, fights uh, the free radicals. These radicals are chemically active, and it has the ability to interact with the cell and causing damaging of the cell as well as it has the ability to interact with the DNA and causing damaging of the DNA and sometimes it's causing mutation. This mutation later on will compare to the malformation. So to test, uh, to test and the study the chemical, uh, to, to test and the study the, the developmental toxicity, the teratogenic of chemicals, we are going uh, to use FETAX uh, assay. This assay is effective time-consuming and inexpensive. We can use it to test any developmental toxicity for any chemical. And we use a South African frog. The reason behind using this model of frog that these frogs are easy to breed and they are easy to monitor and maintain. We have two objectives for this experiment. First, we are going to determine the developmental toxicity for our chemicals, which are acetaminophen, caffeine, and sea salt in VTAX assay. And also, we are going to evaluate the protective role of L16 with these chemicals. Our material and method. Two adult crafts were injected with the HCG on Sunday night. Next day, we had eggs. And we used two versions of L16 solution to remove the jelly coat from these eggs. Then we started these eggs related to the developmental stage and based on the fertilization. After that, we placed each 20 eggs in one dish. Uh, and actually, we have four dishes as control treatment, and we use feedback solution for each dish, for each dish. And we have two dishes for our chemicals, and we test our chemicals uh, with and without L16. So.
So as a result, we have four dishes. Each dish has 20 eggs. For, and for each dish, we have eight mLs of feedback solution. And for our chemicals, we have two dishes. Each dish, again, also has 20 eggs and it has eight mLs of our solution. The solution, uh, we are changing daily and we remove any dead embryos to avoid any kind of contamination. And in the last day of the experiment, which is after 96 hours, we study the mortality and malformation rate. To study the malformation, we use MS-222 to anesthetic the embryos that give us the chance to study them carefully under the microscope. Both mortality and malformation results were documented in PTAX worksheets. This figure explains the relation between control and the L16 related to the mortality. And we can see there is no difference in the mortality rate between both uh, of the treatments. While this uh, figure uh, explains the, explain the malformation rate between control and L16, and again there is no difference in the, in the malformation rate between control and L16 solution. However, this uh, figure explains the, the mortality rate for our chemicals. And, I, uh, and as I said, we test the chemicals with and without L16. So we can see that uh, sea salt has the highest has the highest mortality rate. Then we have L16, uh, then we have acetaminophen after that, and we can see that L16 was working well to reduce the mortality rate with sea salt, and it has little effect with uh, with acetaminophen. For malformation, this uh, figure explains the malformation rate for our chemicals. So we can see that. Acetaminophen has the highest malformation rate, then we have sea salt and caffeine. And l actually has no protective rule with acetaminophen. That means acetaminophen is really a teratogenic chemical uh, and really it has a negative side effect. Then we can see that l has a protective rule with sea salt and caffeine. and the protective role of L16 among, uh, among these uh, chemicals. And for future study, we need to run more replicates data, uh, sorry, we need to run more replicates with different concentration uh, to make sure that L16 is really a protective agent for our chemicals. I want to thank Jacksonville State University Faculty Research Grant and Jacksonville State uh, University Biology Department uh, and also I want to thank Kristen and Kayla who were working with me in the lab and also the Mumford High School students. They were really motivated students and they want to understand and know everything about teratogenic toxicity uh, for our chemicals. And also I want to thank Dr. Uh, Raven who has helped me a lot to be here today to present my lab. If you have any question, I am glad to answer it. So I know that for your uh, experiment you actually used L-cysteine, but research suggests that N-acetyl L-cysteine is actually more beneficial as far as uh, preventing toxicity of acetaminophen. Have you considered writing these experiments with N-acetyl L-cysteine? Actually, I asked Dr. Reven about L-cysteine uh, and N-acetyl cysteine, and I want to work with N-acetyl cysteine, but what I understood that l and n acetyl that uh, really that we have really different uh, effects for each of them. So maybe, so maybe in acetyl cysteine it will work better than l without with these chemicals. So maybe I, I think I have to do it with n acetyl to see if there is significant difference between l and n acetyl is related to the concentration, is related to the chemical that we are going to test. So it's just we, we just need to do it again. Okay. 